Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. And let's thank the Lord for his written holy word. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to share your word with all the listeners and, and for them to share their thoughts with us. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are our God and that you are doing great things on this earth. And that the awakening, the great awakening is starting right now. And the 2011, the rest of 2011, 2012 will be the greatest awakening and the greatest spiritual move of all time. We just thank you for that, Lord Jesus and God, Yahweh, Jehovah, the Father. Uh, we just thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, Matthew chapter 6. Now, this is the Sermon on the Mount, and I encourage everyone to read the Sermon on the Mount. It's an awesome thing. Uh, what God tells us here, what Jesus tells us here, is it takes a lifetime to master, but it's awesome and it's simple, uh, and it'll, it'll benefit your whole life. Uh, chapter 6, verse 19, it says, Do not lay up treasures on earth for yourselves. Because here on earth, moth and rust destroy, and thieves break in and steal. No, it doesn't say because. It says where moth and rust destroy, and thieves break in and steal. In verse 20, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, nor thieves break in and steal. And this is where the title for that book, The Richest Man in Heaven, came from. This is a concept that very few people know anything about this concept Jesus is teaching right here. And verse 21 says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And people get confused. People often say, uh, you know, why are you... We got that question to the, just came in on the email. They saw the, the, the new gift, the consultation on how to make, how everybody can make millions on gold and silver. And they say, well, why do you tell everybody how to do it? Why don't you just do that yourself? And they don't understand that by helping others, Jesus is saying, store up treasures in heaven. And if you read that whole... All the words in red, get a Bible with Jesus' words in red. You read the whole Sermon on the Mount. Uh, let's see if I get this on the camera. I don't know if I can or not. But anyway, all those words are in red. Read the whole Sermon on the Mount, and you'll see that the way you store up treasures in heaven is by doing good for other people. In other words, it isn't just about me. It isn't just about the ministry, a little ministry or a big ministry. It isn't about that. It's about the whole family of God and all the people of the God being blessed, the whole earth being blessed. That's what God's all about. God's about bringing these miracles on a greater and greater scale throughout the whole earth. And and that's what it said in Malachi. When we read it in Malachi uh, last week, I think it was, or the week before, uh, God said, test me out on this. Bring, he said, don't rob me of my tithes and, and offerings. He said, test me out on this. Bring the tithes into the storehouse. Malachi, the last chapter, uh, I think it's verse uh, 8 through 12. And so chapter 3, verse 8 through 12, Malachi, he said, and see, and test me out of this and see if I will not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out such a blessing upon you until there's no more want. There's not room enough to receive it, is what he said. There won't even be room enough to receive it. Such a huge blessing. So it's, and he said, I'll heal your whole land. He said, your whole land's under a curse right now. He said, I'll heal. This whole nation of the United States is under a curse right now. I said the whole nation. The majority of the nation of the United States is under a curse. The majority of this planet is under a curse. Because just like Israel, they're not paying. The, they're not. There's, there's, there's basically one law now. It's the law of love. But the law of love is... Uh, walking in the things of God and loving God and loving your neighbor. If you really love God, you're going to treat him right. And he says the way to treat him right is to give him 10% of your increase. He said he's going to give you wisdom and blessing and make you successful in everything you do. And he and all he asks back is 10%. He's your partner. He's the smartest man in the universe. And it's amazing to me how many people, they know that God's their partner. They know that God's they're supposed to give 10% to God or the things of God, the, the work of God. And and yet they constantly cheat God, and then they wonder why God don't bless them. Uh, but that's one of the places where people miss it. There's other places where people miss it. Uh, another one is good soil. One the big one that the people miss is they donate, you know, to the things of God, but then but they don't really carefully analyze what organization they're putting money into. Is this organization really doing the things of God, or are they just are they just building a bigger church building? Uh, are they are they uh, are they really doing something helpful? Or are they just looking for a cure for cancer? Are they looking for a cure for heart disease? Looking for free energy? A lot of these organizations looking, and they really don't want to find anything. They they spend huge amounts of money looking, and those kind of those kind of that's not good soil. If you put your money, if you put God's money into that, that you're not really giving to God. You're giving to the dark side. 
So how can God bless that when you didn't give it to him? You know, you know what I mean? In other words, it's not good soil. You're putting it in, you're planting your seed into bad soil. You're planting your tithe. You're giving 10% to God, maybe, but you're giving to the wrong kingdom. Don't give to the kingdom of darkness, even if they look like a church. <laughs> some of them, some, the darkness has churches, you know, the side of the darkness. Every church is not necessarily good soil. Every ministry is not necessarily good soil. So you, people have to be a little bit intelligent about that a little bit and you know, and I say intelligent the main thing is really from the heart so intelligence is not that's wrong either. or let's say heart knowledge or heart intelligence in other words seek the Lord and see how he's leading is, is he telling you that this is the best ministry to give to or is he telling you that that this was the best ministry in other words which one ask the Lord and the one that you feel the best in your heart is usually the one that the Lord's and, and this is when you're spending a quiet time in prayer in other words when you're right there in front of these con artists preachers uh, they're so smooth that you always feel like that's the one you should give to. But to go home and spend some time with the Lord in your closet before you decide who it is that, that God, you know, that deserves God's ten percent there. And you know, in other words, who is God is leading you. God, God, it's not you to decide. It's God to lead your heart. And if you learn to listen to your heart, then the one that you feel the most peace about is the one that God's leading you to for tithes or offerings. And of course, it's one also that teach in the Word of God. And it's one that also has miracles. In other words, those are some basic things that a true ministry has. They teach the Word of God. They have miracles or the power of God in their ministry, and so on. And so this is this is how you can how you consider it. Now let me sh uh, further illustrate the point about generosity. Verse 22, right after he says, you know, don't store up treasures on earth, but store up treasures in heaven, where moth and rust. Do not consume, and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And then he says, the lamp of the body is the eye, and therefore if your eye is good, the whole body will be full of light. And and then he says, if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness, and therefore that graves that darkness. And and that didn't make any sense to me for a long time. I read that probably a hundred times. And then finally I got a Greek Bible, a Greek to English, direct translation, word for word. And I found out where it says, therefore, if the eye is good, that word good is also translated generous. Uh, that, I, that If your eye is generous, in other words, when you see somebody in need, do you help them out? Or you see somebody that could use a gift, do you help them out? Is your eye generous or a blessing? Or it says on the margin, it says clear or healthy. Is your eye healthy? Is your eye, is your eye healthy for the things of God? Helping out the needy, helping out the poor, helping out the things of God, helping out the kingdom of God. Is it advanced energy systems or advanced uh, uh, healing systems where you lay on hands, people get healed? Are you helping out those kind of ministries? Uh, and that's what it's saying, not just ministries, but people. In other words, if your eye is generous, then your whole body will be full of light. And the eye tends to covet. The Bible talks about the eye coveting. You know, King David looked out and coveted another man's wife and got himself into great trouble. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about the eye coveting. And so you got to, you know, that's what it's talking about here. Your eye is good, so you want to help those in need. And then if your eye is bad, that's the next verse. Then, then your whole body is full of darkness. And there, when it says bad, that, that Greek word is translated evil or unhealthy or greedy or stingy. And so those four synonyms, uh, and if you say greedy or, or stingy, you really immediately realize what that, both those verses are talking about. It's talking about helping. So it goes right back to that whole chapter 5 and chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 7 too, um, that, whole, that whole Sermon on the Mount about doing good to others, even when they don't deserve it, and the whole planet, and that's how you store up treasures in heaven. So, in answer to that brother's question, why do we teach other people how to how to um, you know buy and sell silver and make money and and become wealthy? Why don't we just do it ourselves? Well, the answer is right here. By giving to others is how we benefit the whole system of God. That's how we store up treasures in heaven. Now, I'm not interested in any treasures on earth. I have, I have very little interest in treasures on earth. Uh, I mean, it's a useful tool to help the kingdom of God, but what I really want is we really want to make strong people that are strong in God so they can carry forth the work. In other words, I'm not going to be on this planet forever. Um, I'm, I got, my home's heaven, and I'm going there one of these days, and I'm going to enjoy it. That's going to be a long vacation, so uh, I don't know how long, but uh, anyway, it's an awesome thing. Our God is an awesome God, and I just want to share, share that with everybody. It's an absolute wonderful thing. Malachi is a wonderful scripture. Everybody should look at these scriptures 
and meditate on them for an hour or two or three and or four or five. There's just these three scriptures. I'm going to give you one more. So that, that let's finish with Acts. Now, if you just look at that one that Jesus said there on the Sermon of the Mount, it's easy to get the idea that we should never have anything because Jesus said don't store up treasures here on earth, uh, but store up treasures in heaven. Now, it's, it's easy to take that to an extreme. But if you look at this one in Corinthians, it helps you get a more balanced view. And also the one in, uh, in Malachi, because how can, you, how can God have a storehouse, and how can he, you fill up his storehouse with 10% of your increase if you don't have any increase? A lot of people in life don't have any increase or any income or very little income, and uh, you know, 10% of nothing is still nothing. You know? <laughs> so, so obviously God wants people to be successful. That's part of the balance. In other words, he wants you to be successful spiritually, storing up treasures in heaven. That's the most important thing. And he wants you to learn to treat him right, give him his 10% and offerings besides that. He wants you to learn to treat him right and treat the kingdom of God right and get your focus right. In other words, he wants you to, you have to have something physical in order to give him something, 10%. You know, God wants you to bless you physically. And that's what he says in Malachi. He said, see if I will not pour out such a blessing upon you that you're overflowing, that there's no more want, that there's not even room enough to receive it. And people would talk about the floodgates of heaven being open and the, the great blessings that would pour out, uh, the windows of heaven being open or the floodgates of heaven. And that's what that's what Malachi is talking about. It's it's all through the Old Testament and in the New Testament, a few places. And even modern times, there's people receiving gold uh, and, and uh, precious gems from God, uh, angels and stuff. And there's a whole bunch of videos on those, uh, pretty awesome stuff. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9 will give us a more balanced view on all this. It says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that grace means undeserved kindness or mercy or just love of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So he was very rich in heaven, right? Heaven, streets of gold, gold throne, I mean, everything. You know, wonderful, rich, very wealthy. Gold is worth a lot, right? Streets of gold. That's how wealthy they are in heaven. Again, Jesus is the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lord of Heaven, right? Uh, so he's very wealthy. Yet it says, for our sake, he became poor. Why? Why? What did he do for us when he became poor? It says he paid the price, is what it says. He said that through his poverty, you might become rich. That's what it says. So God is talking about physical riches, but in the show, uh, apparently Justin TV had a little problem, and that's the first time they've ever had a problem. They've been very good for us. Uh, anyway, uh, so everybody should think on those three scriptures. I'm going to repeat them again. There's Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 through 21, and that's the whole Sermon on the Mount, really, but that's the key of the whole Sermon on the Mount, is to store up treasures in heaven, not on earth. And Malachi 3, 8 through 12, where it talks about how if, if we give God his 10% plus a little offerings, uh, then he'll bless us beyond measure. And that's really what's going on on this whole planet. And that and walking in love. The New Testament, you want to walk in love and faith. So those things are very important. Uh, the third scripture was 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. Now, the dark side, uh, that you know, if you read all three of those, man, they'll give you a balanced view on money and treasures in heaven, which is far more important than money. That's not regular money. That's that's like, that's like you know, that's better than money. But it is sort of like sending money, because one day we're all going to get to heaven if we're serving the Lord. And it's sort of like sending money ahead. If you're going to a foreign country, you want to have money there, and you ain't allowed to carry it on the airplane with you over a certain amount. So if you need a certain amount, you have to wire it ahead. So this is kind of like wiring ahead. You can't take it with you, but you can wire it ahead. People say you can't take it with you when you go to heaven, and it's true. But you can wire it ahead. That's what Jesus taught. And Jesus said you should wire it ahead. So people need to think about this, and it'll bless you. Uh, if you think about it, it'll make you happy because heaven's a wonderful place. And, uh, and, and, the, and there's no reason, and it's all about doing good things here. And Jesus, there, there are scriptures that say that God will look at your deeds. There's a scripture that says you'll be judged according, that uh, there'll be people judged according to their deeds. So that's by doing good things while you're here and walking in love and walking in, in a brotherhood, in other words, helping one another, lift up the hands that hang down, lift up the poor, helping the poor, uh, helping those in need, helping ministries that God is behind, that God is with, that God is doing signs and wonders in those ministries, by helping those and helping the poor, then we're also we're giving our 10% to God and God can bless us. And we're also walking in love and we're walking in faith. Those three basic things, which are really all the same thing, they're all walking in love, basically. 
Um, so anyway, meditate on those. And the dark side is working hard to confuse people. We get a lot of emails where people are confused. They're trying, you know, all kinds of things. They think Christians shouldn't have any money, and Christians shouldn't have any ability, shouldn't have any power, or have any authority. No, that's not in the Bible. God is all about giving us back our freedom and our rights as sons of His, as sons of the King. Adam was the was the ruler. Or you could say the God of this world, in a sense. He was the ruler of this world. God put him here under God, you know what I mean? And he sold out to, to Satan, Adam and Eve. They, they listened to Satan, started doing their own thing, and led to all this problem. Well, Jesus redeemed all that. There's lots of scriptures to show. And we'll be teaching on that uh, upcoming meetings also, upcoming lessons. But anyway, so don't let the dark side confuse you and think you're you're supposed to be worthless and you're supposed to be a sinner all your life. And No, when you come to the Lord, you're supposed to progress and become a powerful son of God, a powerful son of God in this world. There's a scripture that says, rule as kings in this life. And it absolutely means that. And we'll go over that next week. I'm getting all ahead of myself. Uh, yeah. So don't cheat God. He's your business partner. Take him as your business partner. Give him his 10%. He's worth 100%. Think about it. I mean, the smartest person in the universe, the most powerful person in the universe, in your business, is giving you, it's, the Bible says, I do an altar. He will if you're not cheating. I mean, don't try to cheat him. I mean, people do this all the time. I mean, they try to cheat God, and they wonder why they fail. Or they give to bad soil. And it's the bad soil is the devil's soil. Don't plant in devil's soil. Uh, don't don't give to men, false ministries and so on. You know, give to people that are really serving God. So anyway, your 10%. I say give, pay, you know, your 10%. Uh, you know, that belongs to God. Anyway, so go on with that. Um, so don't let the devil keep you confused because that's how the dark side works. And they've got dark... <coughs> If they keep you poor and confused, then Christians are powerless to stop the dark side and the dark schemes. But when we're when we're when our mind is renewed with the Word of God and we have power, and and money is one form of power. In other words, I'm talking about all power. The power of God's the most important form of power, but money is a tool that you need to use. Then we can triumph over the kingdom of darkness with the power of God. You see, all the things of God. God didn't make the gold for the devil and his bunch. God made the gold for his people. God made the silver for his people. Uh, this fake money is another story. But anyway, this, all this paper stuff we use, that's, that's another story. Anyway, God sets us free. And with God's teachings, he's helped made. He, he wants all of his children to be very blessed uh, financially, every single one of us, every single person listening. He wants you to be a millionaire or have plenty, in other words. Uh, and and but he wants you to most importantly the most important thing is that you have treasures in heaven that you love him and serve him money should never have you anything should never have you in other words people are addicted to coffee coffee shouldn't have you you shouldn't be addicted to anything you shouldn't be addicted to money you should, you should be happy to go live in the desert and alone with not a cent on you if God tells you to do and drink and drink out of the rain if it comes or if it don't come then you gotta have faith for it to rain all this shit I've done these things I tell you if God tells me I'm, I'll do it tomorrow if God tells me to go and live in the desert and give up everything I'll do it I've done it before uh, and I don't mind doing it because I love to serve the Lord. And people should be that way. That's the way everybody should be. We shouldn't be addicted to anything or even to luxury or even to, uh, even to you know, a good life or even to nothing. We shouldn't be addicted to anything. God sets us free, and, uh, and that's what Jesus said. I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. By applying God's principles, and one of the principles are hard work. People miss it a lot in this area. They think that just because they have love and faith that the money's just going to fall on, the, on them like ripe cherries off a tree. It doesn't work that way. Uh, hard work is very important. I told you last week about the boy who started working full-time when he was five. And by the time, and he made only like 10 cents a day. He worked 18, 16 hours, 12 hours in the cold Alaska wilderness. Only made a few cents a day, literally, 10 cents a day. And uh, but that, by the time he's 15, he's wealthier than anybody he knew. And actually, yeah, when he was 11, God started giving him words of knowledge about money. Yeah, actually, when he was eight, God made him smarter about money. So uh, now he's one of the most famous and and successful people I know. So you know that's yeah. You know, people need to think about this. This is this is God, and this is how God works. You know, if people are faithful in their 10 cents. You make 10 cents a week, and you pay one cent of that to God. In his, in his kingdom, his kingdom work, 
and you love God and you walk in faith and God will keep blessing you and multiplying you and that's what happened with this boy he, when he was 15 um, he was wealthier than anybody he knew that means all the adults and everything else so when he was 17 I know for a fact he was a millionaire when he was 19 he's multi-millionaire and uh, he retired at 21 is from from physical work and he's just been working for the Lord ever since uh, he does physical work still but not really hard labor like he did the first 20 years of his life or so um, let's see Okay, so if you again, we're going to mention it one more time, just in case people missed it. The the special offer, the new offer on the website is Billionaire Secrets. If you would like to learn how to how to uh, buy uh, silver and gold at a real good price and sell it at the full value, that's that's what you should do. Everybody should look at that, and uh, it's an awesome opportunity for everybody. It it really is. And again, we had one brother. We've had several brothers make millions already on it, but one brother went from 50000 to a million in three months on these techniques. So that's why we're sharing it with everybody, because we want the whole kingdom of God blessed. You get blessed by giving away. You don't get blessed by doing it all yourself or, or hoarding it or stealing it or, you know, secret knowledge and all this stuff. There's things that God says to share, and that's what we share, and, and we share as much as we possibly can, uh, you know, so... Yeah. So anyway, so you keep your motives right. Your motives are not riches. Your motives are the riches of the heavens, or the kingdom of God, or the storing up treasures in heaven, or doing good while you're here. That's your riches. That's your greatest riches. Doing good to those who don't deserve it. Doing good to those in need. Um, that's your greatest riches. So don't lose that. Next week we're going to talk a little more. About, well, not this subject. We're changing the subject, but. Uh, Basically, ruling in life. Uh, it's uh, Jesus intended for us to reign in life, not be poverty stricken and under the barrel and all that stuff. But ruling in life. Uh, so, you know, when this involves spiritual authority over unclean spirits and sickness and every kind of thing that the devil has. So, 